Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Saturday morning here at the shop. We've been working for a couple hours. It's like 7.30 a.m. right now. I'm level sanding an LTD that you may or may not have seen on Trash to Thrash so far. And you guys have probably seen on the vlogs here um, the Stumac buffer I just picked up. So we're setting that thing up today. Right now Ryan's prepping the wood out front, drilling some holes. I can hear him out there. And he's getting ready to start cutting it with the skill saw for the base and the stand. Um, we want to get that thing set up today and possibly try it out tonight. So I would love to get that thing working, start buffing some guitars with it by tomorrow, Sunday. And I want to go check up on that guy. Let's go see what he's up to right now. Recently in the comments section, there's been a request for more Ryan. He told me he's not interested in hosting an episode or building a guitar fully on his own. So this will be the closest we're going to get to that. Ready to host your own episode of the show? No. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ryan. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> I hear you drilling. You're already drilling some holes, huh? Yep, we are. we're making some mounting holes. So I already told them it's like 7.30 or something. We have to wait until maybe 8, 8.30ish to start using the skill saw. Probably 8.30 is good. Yeah, just to be polite. But you think we'll get this thing fired up today? Yeah, I think so. I think awesome. Yeah, it should be pretty sweet. The Stumac uh, plans are incorrect. They have these on their website for how to build your own base for mounting the motor and the buffing unit and I had read in the reviews that it's a little shady. Turns out it totally is, huh? Yeah, yeah. This the the whole pattern for the actual buffing wheel is out of the correct orientation. So uh we've made some modifications there, so this one will be correct. Awesome. This is so cool. I, I don't think there's a real reason why I don't think there's a real reason why they, they have us doubling up except for just for like having a smooth bottom of it. Like how, so you can put it anywhere. But yeah, the counter sinks, right? So yeah. how deep do they put those counter bores? It doesn't even say, but it I'm assuming uh let's see. Yeah, I wonder if it's because of the weight too, because the motor oh. and the, the pulley system is pretty heavy. Yeah, oh, maybe. Just to make it a little stronger. It's got to be at least the head of a of an Allen head bolt, and that's usually like five eighths. Does this say counter sink them one inch right there? Counter bores on uh, the back side. Just the slot. Oh, okay. Oh, so there's a little bit of adjustment there. Yeah. For the motor, sure the, the the tension stays correct, doesn't get loose. Awesome. You love drawings like these, huh? Oh yeah. This is my stuff. This is Ryan's like bread and butter. Back when I first met him, he would always be like drilling out electrical panels for us at our old work. And at my old work, he still works there. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, he would always be drilling out holes. And he's a, a machinist by trade. That was like his first thing that, that I knew him as. Yep. So, he loves his drawings. I love my paper drawings. Schematics. <laughs> Woo! So, this is my idea. This is where the main polisher is going to mount here to the front, pulley the motor back here. And I was thinking, close the front and that angle, that side and the back, and leave the left side open. Okay. Possibly for a door or just open, because I don't think any polishing compound is going to get flung in there. Yeah, I don't think so either. But then, uh, and then just one, one shelf in the middle. Do you think that'd be enough? I think that's good. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't need to have much in there. Okay. Yeah, and just probably centered and... There'll be a little bit of storage space in there. Cool. So I got my floor, the two tops, and the shelf kind of laid out. So I'm going to start cutting them up now. Right on. Yeah. Feel free to make some noise now. It's like almost 9 o'clock. Decent time. We got the inspector here in the field making sure everything's going right. Very skeptical of this uh, this whole project. Kind of set up where we're at right now. Huh? All right. We're gonna edit this to make it look good, right? Sure. A lot of high-end editing gonna be going on here. Excellent. <laughs> good. I'm gonna need it, dude. I'm gonna need it to look like I know what I'm talking about. All right. So here's our top plate. It's going to mount the actual components to. We've got our slots for adjusting the belt tension. And we've got our lower reinforcement plate here. 
with uh, oversized slots so we can have washers on the inside to tighten down everything. And then these are uh, counterboard, so it's got a little bit more meat to it to really hold the, the actual motor in place. Dang. And then now we got them pretty well matched up. I kind of rough sanded them so they're they're real close. So I'm gonna epoxy them together, or not epoxy, Elmer's glue them together. Let them sit for a little bit and then uh, come back in, sand them all again. And then while those are drying, those will become one piece. While these are drying, I'm gonna cut the legs and get the, the shelf and the shelf braces done. Nice. That's where we're at right now. Things coming along good. What time is it? 10.30? Like 10.30. Awesome. Yeah, should be good. Now a couple of things about this new buffer that are gonna save a ton of time when we're working on guitars is when you sand a guitar, you end up sanding through the, all these different grits because when you level sand a guitar, you use something like 600 grit sandpaper and that leaves it very matte, very cloudy looking, but smooths out the finish. Then as you work your way through all the different sandpaper grits, you get a very refined, but still dull finish. And then when you start adding your polishes and, the, and buffing it out, that's when you really get that like mirror-like shine. And to buff it, I've been using a drill lately attached to these little three inch pads. You just put it on the guitar and I've been using liquid polishes. So they work pretty good, but you end up having to polish it three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, depending on how deep the scratches from the sandpaper are. And it can take hours and hours, like six hours to buff out a guitar sometimes. So the sanding and the buffing process is by, by far the longest process when you're working on guitars and refinishing or rebuilding or building a guitar in general, I think. And when you're sanding, you also have to sand through all these different grits starting around 600, then like an 800, somewhere around 1000 or 1200, then a 1500, 2000. Some people go to 2500, 3000 and 3500. You're talking between five and eight different grits of sandpaper, sanding the guitar over and over. That means you're going through a lot of the finish going down and also it's a ton of time. So what's really cool about the buffer is you really only need to sand the guitar to, from what I'm hearing, around 1,000 or 1,200 grit, meaning you can knock three or four grits off your normal sanding process and bring it straight to the buffer. And instead of using a liquid type of polish, like one of these, this is some wires that I usually use and this is some Menzerna, you use these clay, there's a the open edge there, and you actually let it go onto the wheel. You just stick it right on the wheel and it charges up the wheel with this polish. So it's a clay bar of some sort, a compound bar. This one's another Menzerno one, and this one is one that came with the wheel, the Stumac stuff. So I'm gonna be trying both out and seeing if I notice a big difference between the two, but I've heard that this stuff is just incredible. I found a few different designs while looking at Stumac's reviews for this thing, and everybody who bought this thing said they wish they would have done it sooner, that it's pretty expensive, but it's like the number one thing to make a shop really up their level and make their guitars look professional. So not only do we get a knockoff three or four or five grits of sandpaper and sanding time, we also get to save a ton of time from the buffing process because you can buff out a guitar way faster with that kind of machine than you can with a hand drill or even trying to do it just by hand with a hand towel. Reading through the reviews on Stumac's website for the buffer, you can see pictures people upload of their actual buffer set up with their stand and how they all they got it all set up so I found a few of those that I thought looked pretty good and showed them to Ryan and that's where he got the basic idea for how he's doing it so I just got back from buying all the hardware what time is it it's about 1 15 now and um, I can hear him still cutting a little bit out there but it looks like I think he's almost done so he's gonna start putting it together and looks like we're on par to get this thing set up today I was all, right. all ready for an intro, too. I was going to throw it out. So it's uh, time for the reveal a little bit? Yes, sir. All right. You guys ready to check it out? So let's see. Now, it may or may not work. Have you plugged it in and tried it? Not yet. Oh. Yeah, oh. That's better to do on camera in case it explodes. <laughs> all right. So there it is. Oh, boy. Look at this thing. Wow. It is a true work of art, isn't it? A little bit different from the last time you saw it. A bunch of pieces. Dang, you stained the whole thing? The whole thing stained and ready to go. It's this a little bit wet, so don't touch it. Damn, dude, this thing is sweet. It looks so clean. I ended up doing bolts on the casters uh, just because I kind of changed the base a little bit. So I, I pulled those from my stock, but those are all bolted. Just did two in each. Reinforced the, the verticals on these. So I got double 2x4s going down, but still enough room to get around them. Dang. For the compounds. 
Get those compounds in there. I referenced all the other photos and everyone else had the motor oriented like this. Okay. So the rotation should be correct. Okay, cool. Dang, I can't wait to see this thing on. How awesome is that? I got, uh, we have about an inch of tension uh -huh. to, to adjust so the belt ever stretches. We got tension on right now. I aligned the pulleys. Uh, we have this right here. It helps to align it. So if it ever gets like out of whack. Oh, cool. But yeah, it should be, should be ready to go. We can do the belt guard before we start it just in case. Okay. Dang, dude. Down here we got the straight wheels on the back and then we got turning wheels on the front with locks because obviously you don't want this thing moving around while you're trying to buff literally walking around with a guitar <laughs> while the, the buffer is just rolling around with you <laughs> dang dude definitely putting this thing to work tomorrow awesome yeah very awesome Ryan you did a hell of a job on this thing <laughs> as you. always you're the master of designing little jigs and rigs and happy to do it dude it's fun Sweet. You guys will see, be seeing this a lot in future videos, so. Thanks for watching, everybody. Rock on, my friends. As much as I wanted to just fire this thing up and try it out right now, I actually had some things to do and some videos to edit. It was almost 6 p.m., so the workday was just about over. And to get this thing set up and actually figure out how to use it, I know it's going to take a couple hours. I don't want to be rushing anything, and I don't want to ruin any guitars by buffing straight through the clear coat. So that's where the adventure ends for today. We'll be doing a sequel to this video at some point where we'll get the buffing wheels on it, we'll get them raked, we'll load up the compound, and we'll test it out and see how this thing works. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys soon.